there. I'm John Oliver, host of Last Week Tonight. Uh, we are off until February, but uh, with the holiday season now underway, we thought we'd share some important advice regarding exchanging gifts with friends and family. Because during the holidays, you are going to receive at least one profoundly underwhelming gift. <laughs> That's just a fact. <laughs> at some point this month, you will unwrap a present that induces the sort of jaw-dropping disappointment <laughs> that one normally associates with the term lettuce wrap. <laughs> for, for instance, for instance, you might receive a scented candle, which is just a candle that's extra desperate for attention. <laughs> or, or maybe you'll get an edible arrangement which says, I don't know you very well, but if you're anything like me, you have to eat or else you'll die. <laughs> Or maybe you'll get a stuffed animal, which is essentially just a creepy ornament you have to reposition before you can comfortably have sex. <laughs> and, and that is why... That is why I am here with a handy holiday guide to the art of regifting. Just the easiest way to pawn off something that you can't stand, aside from sending your child to summer camp. First of all, first of all, never regift. Never regift to someone who knows the original gifter. It's incredibly uncomfortable to get busted ditching something that was clearly meant for you, whether it's an ugly sweater or, worst case scenario, an engagement ring. <laughs> worst, worst case scenario. You are going to want to create some distance. So the ideal place for a regift is clearly an office secret Santa, because regifting there is like peeing in the ocean. <laughs> sure, sure, it's not right, but it's an ultimately harmless solution to an urgent problem. <laughs> Secondly, you're going to want to personalise it. Write a note to throw the recipient off the scent that this gift was not originally meant for them. Something intimate yet vague, like, saw this and couldn't resist, or this is so you. <laughs> Although I will say, do, do be warned, that could backfire if the original gift could be potentially insulting, like um, a self-help book <laughs> or maybe a box of wine. <laughs> really? Really? You saw this box of wine and you thought of me? I'm three months sober and you're an asshole, Nana! <laughs> you're an asshole! <laughs> Next, you're going to want to disguise the gift to maximise your plausible deniability. A horrible gift, uh, much like your pet, always looks better when dressed up. <laughs> And, and if you're going to, to re-gift, have the decency to re-wrap. It, it looks more festive, and it spares you from walking into a party and announcing, Hey, I brought you an appliance I didn't want. Where's the eggnog? <laughs> if, if you're not going to re-wrap, at the very least, though, use a gift bag. And I'll tell you why. Gift bags are the sweatpants of gift wrapping. <laughs> sure, it's lazy, but it's undeniably better than not putting on anything at all. <laughs> fin finally, finally... And this one is very important. Keep yourself to a single regift per person. Do not, I repeat, do not attempt to redistribute all of your gifts amongst your friends and family like a festive Ponzi scheme. <laughs> You're flying too close to the sun. And when your wings melt, they'll probably smell like a cranberry bog because you made them from the scented candles you got from your sister-in-law. <laughs> I do hope this has been useful. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back in February. Happy holidays, and may all your problems become someone else's. Goodbye! <laughs>